hi! So I'm back to talk about books 176 through 180. So the first two books I'm going to talk about are the first two books in a series and I read this because of the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge. One of the final challenges I had to cross off before the end of the year was to read the first book you see in a bookstore. This caused me so much grief. I just didn't like the idea that I had zero choice in the matter. And I actually did go into um, a bookstore once and the first book that I saw was this. I'll just put it on the screen and I saw that and I was like, I can't buy this. I cannot read this. It's just not happening. Although in retrospect, maybe I should have gone with that book because the second time I did it, I picked up Vortex by Julie Cross, which is the second book in a series. I didn't know much about it, but I saw that it was available on audio at my library, so I actually didn't even buy the book. I just checked out the first two books in the series and decided to read them. Tempest by Julie Cross is the first one, and then Vortex is the one that I had to read, which is the second book in the Tempest trilogy, and I did not like these books. This is like new adult, I guess, because the characters are kind of in college. It's about this boy named Jackson, and he can time travel, and one day these guys like break into his dorm room and they murder his girlfriend and he's so freaked out that he jumps back in time and now he's stuck two years ago. And that's at the beginning of the first book. I just felt like this series, it just wasn't for me. One thing that really bugged me was that the rules for time traveling changed constantly. They would lay down the groundwork for how it all worked, and then two chapters later it'd be like, whoa, we just discovered something crazy about time travel, and like, actually it works like this, and you can do this and this. I ended up just like not even paying attention anymore because I felt like there was no point in trying to understand the laws of time travel within this universe because they were constantly just thrown out the window. I think that that maybe would have been a good plot twist like once or twice, but it just was constant. There were so many subtle comments and instances that really struck me as misogynistic and I didn't like it. There's a lot of super over-the-top dramatic secrecy with the CIA and agents fighting each other and it's just this really dramatic epic battle that I thought was so dumb. I gave the first book like a week two stars and the second book the second book graded at me even more. I gave it one and a half stars. I'm so mad that I wasted so much time reading both of those books because they were decently long. I could read the third one just to find out how it all ends, but I can't bring myself to do it. I just can't. So the next two books I read were more Avatar The Last Airbender graphic novels. I am still just plugging away at this series and kind of starting to maybe go into marathon mode with these books. So I finished off the first trilogy of graphic novels, so I finished with The Promise Part 3, and I felt pretty much the same with the third installment as I did with the first two. I didn't feel like there was a lot of forward plot movement. The next one that I read was the first in the Search trilogy, and I liked this one more because I felt like it had more of the classic gang is going on an adventure. We got so much backstory with Zuko's mom, and I loved that, and I thought it was really fascinating. I felt so much more engrossed in the story, but overall they have all been enjoyable. They're all funny, and they have great art, and I definitely recommend them if you like the Avatar The Last Airbender TV show. I gave The Promise Part 3 three and a half stars, and then I gave The Search Part 1 four stars. And then the fifth book that I'm going to talk about is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. This takes place in the 70s. It is a look at this family. The father is Chinese and the mother is white, and so they have biracial children. One of them dies before the book even starts. You know that the character is dead, but the family finds out about it, and it kind of goes into their processing the loss of their daughter and sister. It also goes back and looks at all of the family, their histories and stuff. I think that this book is just a very intimate character study, a really poignant look at 
racism and feeling like an other in a very small community. It's really, really beautifully written, although it is very heavy on the similes. If you don't like similes, don't read this book because literally every other sentence has a simile in it. But I still thought that the language was really beautiful and the images were really evocative. I actually didn't cry at all throughout this book, which I thought was very weird for me because I'm really emotive when it comes to media that I consume. But the ending hit me really hard and I like sobbed a lot at the end of this book. <laughs> But that's still less than I was expecting to cry. It's not so much of like an outright sadness, but it's just a very quiet, melancholic, depressive state for most of the book, which is not happy, but it didn't make me violently sad. One criticism I do have about this book is that I feel like her parents putting all of their insecurities onto their daughter was just too heavy-handed and I got the point. I wanted to see more to their relationship than just this one thing. But otherwise, I really, really liked this book. It captures you. It has this interesting forward motion to it. Once it ended, I wanted so much more like from the characters and I wanted to know more about their lives and where they ended up. I think that Celeste Ng does a really good job getting into these characters' heads and writing about them in a way that's fascinating. Most of these characters were not super likable people, but they were interesting. That's what I think made this book so good. I definitely recommend it. I gave this like four and a half out of five stars. It was a very quietly powerful book. I know that it's it's pretty critically acclaimed. A lot of people have read this book. I'm a little late to the party, but yeah, I'm really glad I read it and I think that more people should. I think that's it. Right now there's like a little bit less than two weeks left in the year as I'm filming this. I want to hit 200 books just because I'm kind of close, but I would have to read more than a book a day. So I don't know if that's going to happen, but it might, and that's my current goal. I'll see you later.